did my fashion just get dissed by Lucci? Did my fashion, like, how does he know I didn't wear this yesterday? <laughs> huh? huh? What's up, everybody? Welcome on in to the call up Susanna Collins alongside. <laughs> Jillian Sackovitz. So for those of you who are just listening, she just put on a really creepy mask. Um, it's that, my face. But it is not, it doesn't look like your face, Jill. It really doesn't. It's That's my a mouth. little jarring. It's a little bit too oversized, I think, is the is the this issue. This was the small too. They didn't get the proportions right. But Jill has moved into a new home and they are getting a new roof put on the house right now. And so she's in sort of a bunker. We're situation <laughs> we got we me and june we bought our masks um we brought some water um we brought our litter box you're ready our litter box you know and we are look at that We're oh my down. gosh we got litter we got a cat you're ready for anything the An covid AT&T bunker pillow just want to throw that in there and uh we're bunkered down we're, we got all the supplies we we need for now what more could you need what more could you need? That mask. Oh, Jill, that's anyway, so Anyway, can I tell you, can I just tell you real quick about yes. this mask? Yes, yes. So it's one of those ones where you get your own face put on a mask. Yes. And the man that inspired me to do it was Shaq. Shaq had it on. Okay. On the um, NBA on TNT show. And it was so funny. So I bought one for myself, uh-huh. Dan Gargan and Kevin Egan, my broadcast partners <laughs> on Fox Sports South. And we wore them after an Atlanta United win in the post game show. And they... <laughs> We looked so scary. Uh-huh. I feel like I've seen some people where they it, it really looks, looks yes. like their face. But well, it's I think all I got about conned. it's all about the proportions, right? You know, like and and for this one, Jill, you're beautiful girl. You're that it is. It looks like the bottom half of your face has just been enlarged about twenty percent, and it just doesn't fit. And I also had more of a tan this summer. It's a little well. Picture. Listen, didn't we all? Those were happy days, huh? Well, not really. Anywho. I'll- <laughs> <sighs> Moving on. Guys, we have such an incredible episode today. Um, Luchi Gonzalez, head coach of FC Dallas, is joining us. And Jillian and I have been trying to get him on for a while. He's been one of these guys that has been on our, our wish list for many reasons. Number one, he's uh, just an incredibly thoughtful, mindful guy. But really... An MLS legend. MLS legend. But also, um, it's the fashion. We are going to get to the bottom of what goes into his impeccable fashion choices. And it's a conversation that you don't want to miss. We might be handing out a an unofficial end of season award to Lucy. Official. No, it's official. Let's just Thank let's you. just put it out there. Yeah, it's the MLS Golden Hanger Award. No, MLS Lucy Gonzalez the Fashion Lucci Award. Gonzalez Best That's what it is. That's what we have dubbed it. And obviously he is going to be uh taking that home, which I'm sure he he wants, you know. No, never mind MLS Cup. Right like, in the trophy cabinet. Exactly. Seems right in the trophy <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> uh shall we get into here for this? Because we've got some good ones. Here for this. Well, people, if you are like Jill and myself, you've probably spent the good part of the last week. Crying, glued, crying, glued to your TV, <laughs> drinking wine, watching election coverage, and throughout the mess that was that, uh, there was something really quite cool that happened. So if you were watching the Fulton County elections director in Georgia, he had on a Portland Timbers lanyard. And so immediately MLS Twitter sees this, they point it out, and through the powers of social media, we find out that he's the brother of of an original Timbers season ticket holder, and he is also a huge Timbers fan. So then Merritt Paulson gets involved, the owner of the club, and he comes on and he says, hey, man, anytime you're in Portland, my seats are yours, free tickets to a game. So he added in a very cool exchange. That he would be like, he followed up and was like, I will be mad if you don't hit me up. Yes. Really cool. And you know what I love? It's so MLS because – Look, we saw uh, correspondents all over the country. I see it all the time. And if you saw a guy with a um, Boston Red Sox lanyard, mm-hmm. like you probably think nothing of it. No. But MLS explodes and they can't help themselves. No. And, like, I love it. It's it was it was incredible, and for it to be sort of in this, you know, obviously the election is is a huge a, a huge massive deal, and this little slice of MLS just gets inserted 
into it right there yeah, in, in Georgia, what was a vi- you know, so many eyes on that state. So it was just, it was this very, very cool moment that, that happened during a week of chaos, let's be honest. So mm-hmm. um, love that, here for it. We're here for um, hats. <laughs> so in the Inter-Miami game, uh, what I forget what tropical storm it was, uh, but to your point, it was looked insane. I mean, the guys were soaked. It was that gross, humid, crazy wind, rain. It and was a hurricane. It was yes. like a legit hurricane that in they the were playing. In the Inter Miami Cincinnati uh, decision day game, mm-hmm. and I, yeah, I guess Seuss, to your point, I was like, why a hat to keep the rain out of his face? Yes, the goalkeeper is wearing a hat so it was a like baseball, simple baseball cap. and they they cut to him um in one of the shots so <laughs> decision day is always very overwhelming because there's so many games happening at once and we had this screen up at home uh this link that they sent us so had literally six games on my screen so it was hard to kind of keep track but then they i they went to the um the miami game and i saw the keeper miami keeper with this the orange on but then this baseball hat and i was like who is that is that a is that a trainer is that a like a referee? Like who's out on the field? I had no idea that it was the keeper, but then I figured out that he was wearing the hat because he's trying to keep the rain out of his face. But I, it just was, it was jarring for you thought like a, a fan or like a trainer yeah. was like lost out on the field because it's just not a soccer look. <laughs> or you know, um, when you go into the dressing room or you know in the locker room after the game and the yes. guy kind of like chills and puts his hat on, it's like the post game look. Yep, yep, um, that. But yeah. And also, hey, congrats, Miami. You are in the postseason in your first MLS season. The odds, the odds for them, it was 52% according to five. Oh, that's higher than I would have thought. Yeah. And so, but they took, they, you know, they got some help from, uh, from. Don't say it. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Atlanta. You're being really mean right now. Can I tell you something I said though? Montreal. Yes. I did not get a text from Kaylin Carr now that I think about it. But a few weeks ago when I filled in for you on the weekend preview show. Yes. Um, my like second, my MGM second pick, Uh I said that Miami will make the playoffs because if you make the world cup, you better get into the MLS cup playoffs when there's an expanded format and 10 teams get in. There you go. Best get in Matweedy and Iguains. And, uh, then they did. There you go. Listen. Yeah. You need to, you need to stick that to him a little bit because his, his record on those are not good. Call back from me. Sorry, Atlanta. I did not. I thought it would be Miami and Atlanta, not at the detriment of Atlanta United. Um, yeah. But well, sh- here's the thing. Atlanta United, they got the loss. So mm-hmm. no matter what the heck happened, they weren't going to the playoffs um, anyway. A draw and it was slim chance, but yep. there was a chance and it was actually shaping up to look that way, uh, yeah. but they needed to win that game. They, they needed, needed to win. win. And look, I mean, ugh, Chicago Fire, obviously, that was really disappointing because yeah. same situation. They needed, they, all they needed to do was win and they couldn't get it done. So as it is, Montreal On and Miami year. get those two spots. Here we go. Playoffs around the corner. Decision day was Sunday. We've got this, we've got a little, a little extended break because of an international break before the playoffs actually start. And something I have noticed, and I'm sure you have as well, Christmas decorations starting to pop up. Now we are weeks away. We are weeks away from Thanksgiving. So this is not even, um, you know, this is very early. So my sister-in-law, who I love dearly, Katie, Literally, literally the day after Halloween, so November 1, no! she put up four Christmas trees in their house. Lies. It's all decorated. I mean, it is, you would think it's like December, like middle of December in their house, but it's not. And she was just like, no, I need this joy. And so I was like, God, oh, we have this little break. You know what? I might put up my Christmas tree. Did I you? might do it. I haven't yet, but I think I'm going to do it. But I'm. I want to ask you. I want to gauge our listeners and our viewers. Are you here for Christmas and holiday decorations this early? Come closer to me. We're kind. No, this way. We're kind of like Christmas right now. Oh wait, wait. Oh, we yeah. just made a tree. Look at yeah. that. Oh, yeah. oh that it's was little adorable. Things. That was adorable. so. As you can tell, based on my reaction to that. I don't give a rat's butt <laughs> what you do. If it makes you happy, do it. Woo! Good answer. Wait, I have to it's, grab something right it's now. It's the little things. And you also, Suze, you're ready. You look like you are ready to cut down that that Christmas tree. So this is this like house <gasps> spray. Freeze your fur. It smells like a pine tree and I have been spraying it. 
around. Did you ever get the candle? Yep. Oh, got the candle. I have the um, the little oil. You know the oil. Then you put the, the sticks in the diffuser. Have that too. Oh. Again, uh, not sponsored, Christmas. but the company Fraser Fur. Get on it. it. Smells so good. Oh, it's amazing. Gross, evergreen. It's no. So it's like it literally smells like a fresh cut tree. So highly recommend. So okay, thank you because I feel like I've I've caught in. Matt Doyle wanted to uh, take me down because I mentioned that I might put up my tree. And he, he gets was the like, past. We love him. I mean, he's salty anyway. It's fine, but we love him for it. But yeah, I, but we want to know, guys, let us know if you if you think it's too early for the holiday stuff or if you just like are like, hell, it's 2020. Anything goes. You know who we should have asked? Who? Lucci. Dang it. Missed, Missed opportunity. opportunity. All right, time now for at and 5G call to the field, and we are so excited to bring in head coach of FC Dallas, a guy that we have been wanting to get on the call-up for a very long time, Lucci Gonzalez. Lucci, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Susanna, Julian, thanks for having me. Um, okay, so Lucci, right off the bat, we want to talk about something that uh, the the internet and social media has been loving <laughs> as of late, FC Dallas repurposing over and over again this amazing video of you dancing with your adorable son Liam I know I see your face right Sorry. now <laughs> but we just we kind of we want to get the backstory behind this video what was going on how did how did it come about I thought we were going to talk about the next game coming up you know <laughs> I know I know that's coming soon um no look honestly so my wife has this thing called Instagram oh, and yes. uh and so what obviously I don't have that myself and so she she puts things for the family and for friends and, and FC Dallas love to uh, to 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 look at that and 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 use it and and I don't mind and obviously they ask permission and look it's it's a family tradition we like to have dance offs and we like to you know at least once a week have have an evening where we put our favorite songs and our favorite music and and uh, and be ourselves and let loose and whether we have good moves or bad moves just be be ourselves and and love each other and, and th- those are the moments we have together as a family and, and I and I cherish those and I, and I need to as much as I can. So sharing that with our fan base or sharing that with the rest of the world with little clips and with edits. Hey, um, that's me. That's my family. Those are my kids and, and there's nothing to hide. I love a dance love off tradition. See, I thought it was inspired by TikTok and all this, but it's original. It's a tradition. No, no, we've done this since they were, I mean, this is before I was even with FC Dallas nine years ago, 10 years ago when my daughter was a baby. So this something I, great. you know, I met, I met my wife on a dance floor, so I'm gonna. We, we love to move and and we love music and and we we're gonna this we're gonna is, oh, we're, we're always gonna do that. This where is was amazing. the dance? Where was the dance floor? I met her when I played for the Colorado Rapids in Denver, Colorado. Okay, I, I don't remember. I don't remember the the actual <laughs> name. No. You know, we had the day off, uh, <laughs> the the next day off. So, um, but I met my wife while while I was playing in, in, with the Rapids. Um, real quick before we move on to real life, uh, who wins the dance offs most often? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have to lead by example and, and, <laughs> and, you know, you obviously saw the clip with my, my, my son behind me, not really following my steps, doing his own thing, which I love that. Um, but Hey, I take pride in, and believe me, I, I don't know where I get it because my dad, I, actually I do. I do. My, it's not my dad. It's my mother. My mother, she, she, uh, she's from the Northeast and she moved down to Miami. She was uh, 18 years old, and she met my father, who's from Peru. Uh, they actually also, ironically, also met on a dance floor, dancing sal- <laughs> dancing salsa in Miami. And but my mom, for an American, she picked up quickly, and she's got all the uh, some great moves. And and uh, she she certainly helped uh, inspire me. And I, I got my rhythm from my mother. Let's just say that. Yeah, you're you've got good moves, Lucci. I think we can all we can all agree on that. Um, I can't awesome. keep up with the new that's ones. That's awesome. Though. That's awesome. The, the dabbing and the, the the new moves are uh, the the rhythms are different for me, and I, I like to watch it. It's entertaining, but I, I can't do those anymore. I can't stick with can't stick up. with what you know. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's my that's my motto when it comes to the dance moves. Um, okay, let's let's talk a little bit a little bit of soccer because that's you know ultimately why why we're all here. Um, so congratulations on making the postseason once again, Lucci. Um, I remember I had the the pleasure of interviewing you 
last year, twice, uh, well, on decision day after you guys clinched a spot. And then after that um, really, really tough loss in the first round to Seattle. And I remember the conversation you had and and you said, you know, just just getting a taste of of the playoffs for these young guys was so important. It was going to make them hungrier. Um, so I I wanted to ask you about what where the biggest area of growth you've seen in your team from then until now in this team that's about to enter the 2020 postseason. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, and and it was, a, it was a great lesson for myself and all of our players. And as we spoke before, young players, you know, but this year coming into the preparation for 2020, these, these young players were still young, but they had more experience and more ambition. Um, and so, you know, obviously in, in our preparations in preseason, uh, we spoke about the next step for us. We want to keep, um, you know, finding uh, our evolution and to play the game even better, master things that we want to do with, with and without the ball to get more results, you know, and, and at home, I felt we were pretty dominant and, um, but we wanted to improve away. So that certainly was our objectives coming into the preseason. We started the season off, I think, in a positive uh, way at home with a few games. And then the, the pandemic, the pandemic happened for, uh, for us and the rest of the world. And um, that, that was a challenge. And, but we, we knew we were in the same position as everyone else and, and how we were going to deal with this and a lot of Zoom meetings and trying to maintain some hope that the season's going to happen and not knowing when and when or how, but just staying busy, staying connected and, and being uh, hungry for whatever may come and trying to adapt. So we all went through that. And, and then you, you, we, we get excited about Orlando and the tournament that, that, that took place in Orlando was, I think, a, a, I know a risk, but certainly it's something needed to be done and, and we need to take risks to, to achieve things. And, and I congratulate the league for pulling that off. And, and I wish we could have been a part of that, but, you guys know the circumstance that we couldn't, and and that hurt. Um, and it was it was uh, it was hard to accept that, and and that really challenged me, not just as as the coach, but uh, you know, the, the learning about our players as human beings, and 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 uh, prioritizing their health and safety over over soccer in the game uh, was hard. It's not easy because the game is a big part of our life, and mm-hmm. we're focused on it, and that's why we're together. But there are things that are more important in the game, and I certainly learned that together with the players, and they certainly inspired me with their strength. And the resilience, and then coming back from that was not easy, but but with time we did. Um, and then we had the challenges. To come, you know, we were the first team to have the anthem in the stadium, and and there's uh, <clears throat> there's different opinions about that. Is that that uh, for right or wrong? That there people have the right to have those opinions and express themselves. So and as we do, but learning through that was not easy, and 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 so again another experience that that, right. that was a first first for me as a coach, first for. Me as a father, as a husband, and, and for my players first, you know. And But going through all that and then putting ourselves in a position to be in playoffs, I, I'm just so proud of these guys. I'm proud of the this, this staff. I'm proud of this club. I'm proud of my owners to always find optimism uh, in, in what's next and, and learning from the past and always supporting our, our players and our, and our staff uh, through their challenges, through our challenges, and, and being hand-in-hand hand together with us. So um, I know I'm disappointed with the, the result in the last game against Minnesota where we couldn't clinch a home playoff game. But, hey, it wasn't meant to be, and, and uh, it wasn't for a lack of trying. It just didn't work out, and, and we're disappointed with that. But that's, I think, maybe the best fire that we can have uh, going into this game against Portland is, is not, not being able to have done it this last game and to get it at home. And now we, we want to we earn a home game somehow. Somehow can we earn a home game? That's our motivation now, and, and we have two weeks to prepare and – we haven't played Portland this year, but have a lot of respect for them. They're also a resilient team. They've dealt with injuries. Um, I'm really looking forward to this next challenge and opportunity. I know the boys are, and and uh, it's certainly exciting. Sometimes hunger is the best medicine. You know, I think back to 2018 when Atlanta United went and embarrassed themselves uh, when they could have won the Supporter Shield, and they lose to a not even in playoff contention Toronto 4-1, and then they go on to win. MLS Cup and the guys always said like I don't think if we lost that game we would have had the fire kind of heading into the playoffs so it's it's always funny how end of the year results kind of maybe come into play uh, later on and something we weren't planning on talking about but that you mentioned when you look back at every team's year it's so funny to think about FC Dallas and the MLS's back tournament and then you guys get those games back you have to make up games which means you're playing earlier than everybody else which means you're the first to return to your home stadium, which means you're playing the national anthem. What did you tell your players and your family? Is it something you talked about before? 
How do you handle that? Because it was what everyone was talking about all summer. Now we seemingly have, have gotten past that. No, certainly. Um, and as I said before, there was a lot of firsts for us, myself as a coach and these players. And look, we do have a platform and there's opinions about how the platform is used, especially in, in times where uh, uh, that, that there's a lot of uh, social injustice, racism, things that, that just are not right in the human way. And, and so we, we all have a different way to share. Some of us are a little more introverted and we don't want to be busy on social media or share things and others are very active and we're all different and and, and and my my way was to um number one support the players and that they're all different and they all um, can use the platform in the way that they choose and as long as there's respect for everyone and the club that they represent and their teammates um and they want to give their opinions or their thoughts and their or their leadership on things or dis- likes or dislikes they have the right to do that and they have my full support and however they want to express that whether it's it's a kneel whether it's a, a post online or social media or an interview um again want, as long as they're understanding that there could be different opinions and they respect the club and and their teammates I, they've got my full support and, and i'm really proud of them i'm really proud of them all of them to have handled it the way they did um and to learn and to grow from it uh, and to be stronger after lucha you um i mean just hearing you speak about about your your players, um, you know, you get the sense from you that that it's a whole family. You know, like with you as a head coach, like they are your players are our family to you, and you are a, a coach that players love to play for. So I'm curious to know if it, you know throughout your your career and your experience as a player, who who were some of your biggest influences um, that have kind of shaped the way you now manage your team. Yeah, I appreciate that question, and it does make me reflect. And um, I think reflection is really important for all of us to do. Is before we move forward, let's just remember where we've been and where we where we come from. You know, I, I would say firstly ownership. You know, Dan Hunt and Clark Hunt um, from the beginning when they brought me in to the academy system, um, we had the connection. I had the connection with them. We're both we're all alma mater. I'm a mater from uh, SMU, and. Um, and we had our relationships through Shellis. You know, Shellis coached me in college. Shellis Hyman, who was the co- current coach when I came in in 2012, and and I just felt this family environment was here before I got here, and uh, and they accepted me. They brought me in as one of their own, one of their own sons, and and I developed in this club through the academy system, and my my experiences with Shellis uh, when when you know Shellis was big, and uh, bringing me here, I played for him, and he gave me the opportunity that I never thought I would have to be in a pro pro club and pro academy. And then Fernando Clavijo. Fernando was my coach in Colorado Rapids for two years. And I always say the story to <clears throat> different people, depending on the moment. But, you know, I, I played for Fernando for two seasons. And and uh, in my second season, you know, they didn't pick up my option. And I remember uh, being in a room with Fernando and doing my exit meeting. And uh, he just told me the, the, the truth. And you know, I wasn't going to continue um, playing with that club, and but that he was willing to help me in, in my next step in any way he could. You know, I didn't agree with the decision. I, I felt I had more to give in the team and the club, um, but but he get, he showed me respect and care as a human being, um, and it was sincere. And because of that feeling he gave me, um, I always showed appreciation, whether I agreed with the decision or not. And here I am, six years later, being hired. Uh, by the same man that that cut me from when I played, and it, and I think it's it just shows you that no matter when we play, you know we agree or we don't agree with decisions, but if you maintain good relationships and you care about people and you show that and you're sincere about that, you never know when when they may give you an opportunity again, and and that certainly was my connection with Fernando, and and he was like a father to me, and 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 bless him, bless his soul, and bless his family, and I still am in touch with Martha, his wife. Um, because that's a family of strength and motivation. They come into this country and finding success with the U.S. national team. Fernando's story is incredible. So that's really inspired me, uh, just in terms of mentality, grit, never giving up. Shells was big on giving me structure, giving me discipline. A boy coming from Miami, Florida to Dallas, Texas to play college soccer. Shells helped me become the man that I, that I, that I am today. And, and then, I, like I said, Dan and Clark Hunt, those, those two guys showed me what family – and business can be connected and can be successful. And even though we, you know, maybe business is not, decisions are made with your heart, 
you have to be made with your head because there's bottom line, there's margins. And still, your heart has to be involved in all those decisions. And he cares about people. And so I've learned from that. And if any way I can do that with my players and just show love and care for them, no matter the win, the loss, the performance, that I love these people, I want to know about their family and how I can help them in any way I can, myself and my staff. And my staff show that every day, model that every day, and I'm proud of them for that. And then lastly, you have Oscar Pereja. Um, Oscar is is a, a dear friend of mine, and and uh, I wish him the best also here in the, in the playoffs. In a short amount of time, he's done an amazing job in, <clears throat> in just steering the culture in, in the right direction on and off the field for Orlando. I'm not surprised by that. Um, and, and, you know, um, Oscar gave me the opportunity to do what I did in the academy. We were connected. I learned so much about the game, about, about leadership, uh, about coaching. Um, he gave me that opportunity to be close to him and to learn from him, and, and I will never forget that. You answered one of our fan questions, just wanting to know more about your connection with Oscar Pereja and how that's affected you, um, motivated you going forward. Love to hear about, I mean, so invested. You love to hear it. I want to learn a little bit more about the Youth Academy. Um, and the talent that emerges out of FC Dallas. You were the director there from 2012 to 2018 uh, when you became the head coach uh, at FC Dallas. First off, you know, it has to be incredibly gratifying to see guys like Reggie Cannon, Weston McKinney move on to Europe. But for you, Luchi Gonzalez, how do you measure a good player when they're so young? What is like the first thing that sticks out to you that you that sparks your interest? Yeah, I was looking at the senior national team. Um, list and call up. I know it's mostly it's all European based except for one, and uh, there was four players there that, that I had coached at some point and through the academy or mm-hmm. you know through the youth or even the senior team. And and in my mind, I'm like only four. You know, boy, I, there's not more. You know, and and I'm and I'm already thinking, hey, there's this player, that player. It could be six. It could be seven. I I just take personal pride in in having the opportunity to to have worked with young players, whether it's with the first team or the academy before, that can one day play a World Cup, represent their country. And that's something I take very personal. Uh, I had a lot of experiences in the, in the youth national teams. I took a lot of pride in having players given those opportunities with the 17s, the 18s, the U20s, U23. So, and, and the same goes for the senior team. So, um, you know, I, Maybe my name is connected to a lot of these players and, and the experience I have with them in the academy, but I can name you 20 other names of, of highly motivated, talented coaches, um, assistants, uh, goalkeeper coaches, uh, you know, directors. Uh, Chris Hayden that works for the youth club, who's now our academy director. I mean, what a, what a, what a guy. What, that's, that guy is the, the heart of our academy. He's always been there from the time I he, – he showed me the ropes through the academy when I first got here. And uh, he's coached at the different age groups. He's been involved in all these guys' lives. So he's been just as influ- influential as me, as, as maybe I could have been. And there's other guys, Francisco Molina, Clement, Tucuman. I, I can name so many guys. Mikey Vadas, Peter Lucine, who worked with me with the first team. They, they coached in the academy. They coached in the academy um, before. And they work with these players as well. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a belief. I, I, you asked me, you know, how, why, identifying, how, how do they get opportunities? I'll say this, Dallas has a very competitive youth sports environment and culture. If you go to a U11 girls soccer game, my daughter is 12, so I know what that's like. Mm-hmm. The, it, it's, so, it's so competitive. The parents, maybe, maybe not, maybe to the flaw, they're so passionate and they're vocal about it and they're competitive with each other, as par- the rival parents, the referee, the, their own child, demanding of their child. I mean... I feel like I'm watch I'm watching also a game in Argentina that's U10. It's just <laughs> it's it's a war. It's these are like these little wars with kids and and you see these uh, I see all around the the field these one-on-one meetings with the parent and the child after the game and they say oh it's, it's the worst time to talk to your kid. Don't give him feedback. Ref. I don't know like they're, they're, I know it's a stress on the child but there's something in that that builds strength and resilience and 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 thick skin and these kids are in very competitive youth soccer environments. You know there's promotion and relegation, U10, U11, no. U12. Yes, there's four divisions, and there's promotion and relegation <laughs> oh in God. U10, U11, U12. MLS can't and, even handle that. And you How wonder, are the 11-year-olds supposed and to And you handle wonder that? why, and you wonder why there's so, there's so much competitiveness in, oh my God. in youth sports, Yikes. in youth soccer. And so these kids, I'll say, come from a very competitive environment. There's rivalries. There's There's just passion in these games and for good or bad, it develops their 
passion to compete and to be to win to win wow. these kids want to be winners and they have to learn the right way to win over time and in our, in our club in FC Dallas we want to do it a certain way with in, in the football sense in the football model and a playing style and so I, I think we, we have great coaches that have gone through great coaching education and they want to play the game the right way and that was modeled um, you know with, with Oscar Pereja and, and, and the academy and the time he was the academy director with Chris Hayden and then I came in and just I learned myself and try to continue that and, and evolve it. <clears throat> and then and then I'd say the competition as well. We go the club wants to seek international competition. Our young players from U10, you are U10s, U11s, and I know it's hard right now. It's a challenge right now in the world to travel, but we're used to our U10s, 11s going to Brazil, playing tournaments, going to cool. Europe, wow. going to Mexico. As when I was in the academy coach, I went to all these different countries. I host we hosted these teams, met from Mexico, from Europe, Argentina, yeah. um, Spain tournaments, events, games. And imagine a U, Weston McKinney, by the time he was in our U17, had played over 50 international club comp- uh, games. So it's not just their development internationally with the youth national teams. Experience. They're doing it with their club team. Mm-hmm. They're doing it with their club team. And these are things we learned from other club teams in Mexico and in South America and Europe that you need international competition. Mm-hmm. You need international competition. So th- that's a few of the things. And then lastly, I could say this. Look, no... No player, no person is ready. They're not, no one is ever ready to do something. You can be prepared. And so what we want to do is prepare our, our players. I wasn't ready to coach my first MLS game. <laughs> but the ownership, the ownership believed that I could be ready. Or I am prepared that they, they felt I was prepared to continue to, to lead the club at the first team level, which is still, I, I still have to think every day, what an honor, what a privilege I have. Every day, no matter what happens tomorrow, I'm going to always be thankful and show appreciation and energy and, and give everything and try my best based on what I've learned in this family because they've given me everything. And, and so whether it's a staff member, whether it's a coach, whether it's um, an administrator, uh, a physical coach, a medical member, my trainers, our trainers came from the academy. My physical coach came through the academy. The assistant coaches came through the academy and, and our owners they don't just talk about it. They show it. They do it. And for good or bad, it's it's just it's our model. We don't believe in competing without development. They go hand in hand. It's like breathing in and out. You have to do both to live, and that's how we want to live. And that's 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 the world I, I get to be a part of every day. Um, and no one's ever going to be ready until they have to do something, but they can be prepared. And if you prepare them well, they can they can learn to be ready, uh, whether it's their first game or their twentieth game. Watch Reggie Cannon's first game. Mm-hmm. Watch Reggie Cannon's first game. He wasn't perfect. He made mm. mistakes. He made mistakes, but he gave his best. And you saw something in him that is you knew was going to get better. And could can and he had a high ceiling because of his mentality and because of the process he went through. And 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 that's what it's all about. And 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 I'm, I love to be a part of that. Real quick, before I know, Suze has a question. What position does your daughter play? She plays uh, right back. You know, <laughs> yes, I always show. That I was show me. <laughs> Yes, this was go. a mean defender. <laughs> I I show her uh, Danny Alves. I show her a lot of Danny yes! Alves oh. clips, and I'm gonna have to show her uh, Reggie Cannon and and uh, Re- Brian Reynolds clips here pretty soon. But I just I want her to be creative though. So I'm always telling, I'm always asking, how many crosses did you get? Did you get shots? You didn't score. It's like, Daddy, I'm the right back. I have yeah. to defend. I'm like, no, 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 no. You, gotta, you need to get forward. Get forward. You need you to get up and back. <laughs> you can create. Um, eh, I'm learning to be a dad. To be honest, uh, I might go overboard sometimes, but. Um, I mean, I'm learning. I'm learning. That's we amazing. all are. I just am. I'm thinking back. Like you're talking about the the youth teams in Dallas, and like ten year old Susanna would not have fared very well in uh, a situation where there was relegation at stake. I feel like that yeah, would yeah. have absolutely destroyed me. Didn't have the the mental wherewithal to to handle that. So that's no. really really interesting. More of a town soccer kind of gal. You know, club was a yep. little too much for me. Yep. Um, okay. Pick up. Street ball. <laughs> yes, exactly. Low pressure. Thank you. Recreation. Rec league. Okay. Yes. Go Too ahead, Sue. It's an important on. question. No, really. these are this. So, oh, Lucci, this is, I, I, I'm, I have goosebumps right now because I've wanted to ask you about this for so long. Jill and I have. <laughs> She's not uh, kidding. I'm not. I'm actually not. And I, I, I just want you to know that Jill and I have dubbed ourselves uh, the unofficial fashion police of yeah. major league soccer. You mm-hmm. know, this is, this is something that we take Clearly. very seriously. We, um, we see it all and, and we think that, you know, 
we have fairly good style. So we like to appreciate it when we see somebody who just absolutely takes it to the next level. And that, Lucci, is you. You are hands down, hands down, without question, our (laughs) best dressed MLS coach. I'm less mean, personality, whether, probably. Literally, whether it's the it's the cardigan that that broke the the internet, the vest, <laughs> the button downs, down to the shoes, you kill it right. every time. And so, my biggest question for you is, what goes into your decisions on what to wear on game day? Because I know that it's not something that you're just throwing together. Because it is the, the it's polished, it's put together, it works. We want to know your secrets, Lucci. No, no secrets. It's all, <laughs> it's, all uh, it's all plagiarism. It's all plagiarism. Um, Who picks it look, up? I, I, honestly, uh, a cardigan is not going to win me an MLS Cup. Uh, let's let's be honest here. Um, I I I want to I want to I'm focused on a lot of things that that have nothing to do with my appearance or what I wear. But um, and and I'm going to keep learning. Totally and, fair. And 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 I want to, you know. Uh, I, I look, you guys. I knew coming and talking to you was going to be a well-rounded conversation, and it wasn't just going to be soccer. So I, I invite that, and, and I welcome that, and I appreciate that because I do think we need to laugh and we need to talk about other things. Because when you, when you have a, 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 a stimulus of other things, you can improve maybe your main focus. And so, um, look, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I grew up in Miami, Florida. Um, I, I followed a lot of different you know, music styles and bands. I love to go to small shows and, and there's some, I just, I just, there's certain things that, uh, that I'm attracted to and what I want to listen to and art, whether it's art, uh, that I want to see, or it's something I want to wear or buy. And believe me, I'm not spending a lot of money on something, but look, if, if I, I take pride in putting things together and wearing certain things, but you know, I don't know the, you call me a metrosexual or uh, whatever you, <laughs> You know, I know there's different names of it, and I don't want to go overboard. I try to be practical, um, but I, I I try to wear what I think is is uh, for me cool. You know, and look, I'm getting older, so I'm finding that I've got to embrace the gray hair and 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 cardigans are maybe old school, but I'm gonna keep it classic. I want to keep it classy, and it, does, it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, mm-hmm. It can you can have a uh, you can sprinkle something in there that that you've invested in that you're proud of, but at the same time, it, it just doesn't take a big budget to, to try to just put something together. And Hey, I learned from our players. Some of the things they put together before mm. the pregame you got the are, really, are really you cool. Got are really okay. cool. Yeah, yeah. I got young guys that are, yeah. they're showing me, they're showing me the way, Taking they're showing me the way, you know? So believe me, I'm not going to be this 90 year old wearing high tops, you know, or, <laughs> or I, I'm going to, I'm going to know, recognize my, where I am in my life, my age and, and my wife too. are timeless. I guess so. I yeah. guess so. But I appreciate you guys appreciating that I what what I wear because I don't know. It's I know it's not the most important in my career. It's not going to earn me another contract or win me, like I said, win me the next playoff game. But it's it's always fun to talk about it. Well, Lucci, uh, you should start a subscription service of clothes um, because there's a lot of guys out there that could use a little help. Yes. So, well, but also, and it's not. Is that bad? Us. Is that bad that I? Put a little extra time. Look, no! my wife. My wife doesn't no! dress me. You know, I'm not. I'm not the guy that my oh. wife buys clothes for me. I can't do that. Like I've got to pick. I pick. You pick what them I out. Want. See. Yeah. This there you is go. Lucci. I'm not kidding. And and when we tweeted out, we were having you on the show and asked questions. At 90 percent of the That's questions from question. men, from men, were wanting Help to know about out, your outfits and what goes into you picking it out Start so it's not service. it's not just us it is it is universally appreciated so you're you're whatever you're doing you're doing it right okay. keep it up you look like a million bucks i wore i wore an fc dallas jacket last game so look you know it's, That's it's it. just There's it's just gonna be what i it's just gonna that. be what i maybe the next game i'm gonna wear a hat just, <laughs> just like clock right. just like clock uh, okay? yes <laughs> Another question that and we, we have a lot of well dressed coaches. Come on, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, okay. Greg Vanny, One of them. my boy, Greg Vanny, grew the hair out. Saying. Greg Vanny grew the hair out last year. I did. I yep. the scarf, the, the blazer. Come on, Peter yep. Vermees. Um, I know, think. I think always nice. Piece, piece, I think nice Jim piece, Curtin. Nice suit. Jim Curtin is low key. He gets a very, oh, yeah. very well dressed coach. He gets custom suits. I oh, put yeah. him on there. Jim Jim uh, Jim Curtin certainly has you know has he a, serves. He's certainly registered uh, the J Crew online membership. Come on. 
he, he's, all, he's got J. Crew all over that. He Come really on. does. Agreed. Uh, Luke, Congrats last- to Jim, by the way. That's awesome. Um, just to see the process of Philly yeah. and the patience and believing in the academy system and Jim, Jim over, over the years having his uh, experiences and always being positive. Uh, I got to really get to know him a little bit in the preseason when we played them. And uh, he's just a first-class guy. And, yeah. and congrats to him and the club and, and all the best in, in the next step. Hope, hopefully we can see them uh, later on. Did Indeed. you see Bob Bradley in a bomber jacket? I, I did. And, you know, Bob, hey, I like – Bob has sometimes the, the T-shirt, mm-hmm. the tennis shoes, the the, je- the, the the slim jeans and – Hey, he lived in Europe, so he knows more about fashion over there than maybe than me. Oh, see, I, I had a theory that Bob Bradley, when he got the LAFC stylist. job, that they hired they hired a stylist for him. That was <laughs> like it wasn't actually him making those decisions. It was actually the club. So that's just my theory. I'm, you know, I won't comment. <laughs> there's won't nothing. Comment on there's one. nothing behind it. Just just a hunch that I have. Okay, let's uh, let's end on soccer, Lucci. You guys have the Portland Timbers coming up. Another uh, well-dressed coach in Gio Savarese. Why can FC Dallas in 2020 um, make a run? Give it. Give us a little scouting report on that game. You know, you got a nice little break two weeks from now. Uh, what can we expect, and wh- why this FC Dallas team? Look, obviously, uh, Portland have had challenges just like us, and the the injuries have not been easy for them and their best player in. Uh, and MLS is back in Orlando, Sebastian ha- having his injury. That, that could really uh, affect the team in a negative way and they maybe not recover from it. But they showed they could still score goals. They could still create. They could still protect their goal home and away. And, and look, that's, it's not a mistake they're in that, in that third place spot, which we were fighting for that, also that spot uh, a few days ago, but it, it didn't happen. Uh, no, look, G- Gio does a great job to create um, a camaraderie in his team to fight for on, on every action, every possession, every play um, t- till the end and never give up. Um, his teams are going to be organized def- defensively with a shape that's hard to break down. So they're going to protect their goal um, and they can hit you in different ways with possession and patience or with quick counters um, because they have those type of players and players have stepped up for them and, and they're in the absences of injured players. And, and you always have a special moment of Valeti that, that can change a game and, and we have to recognize that. And Chada's going to boss the middle. So, and their back line is very solid, and, and their keeper makes big plays. So, it's it's a it's a it's a very competitive team, and and uh, and we we're going to respect that. But the best way we can respect that is to to go there and 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 do something that the people don't expect. And and I know maybe the odds are considered against us. I'm not a betting man, but <laughs> I know the bets are against us. But we're going to embrace that. Uh, we're going to embrace that. I told you this last game didn't go the way we wanted. And um, we have a chip on our shoulder about that. And we're going to be uncomfortable about that because we want to improve things for our fans. We didn't earn the home, fa- uh, the home game for our fans. And that, that hurts uh, me personally and, and I know our players. And we want to we change that. We want to do something about that. And, and so we're going to also put our plan together and, like you said, work these next two weeks and, and, and just build off of the positives that we've shown in the season, learn from the negatives, and we want to go to Portland and, and give our best and, and do something that, like I said, maybe the majority are not expecting. We look forward to it. That absolutely, Lucci. Uh, we can't on, thank you enough. Oh, we, oh yes, we've got a we've got a. So, oh. The MVP award has been <laughs> named to the Landon Donovan. It's award season. MVP. It's award season. Um, there is a best dressed award in Major League Soccer, and we didn't ask anybody, but we are this- naming the best dressed award now. The Lucci Gonzalez <laughs> best dressed award. <laughs> Um, it will forever be I think, be known I think that's too that. small. That's too it's small. It's the inaugural me. one. Uh, Lucci, you won it. This is our golden <laughs> hanger with a cardigan. And, uh, yeah, for the rest of Major League Soccer's history, the best-dressed coach will be known as the Lucci Gonzalez <laughs> Best-Dressed Coach Award. Don, oh, I man. hope it's okay. Don't yeah, we haven't gotten it clear well, I... from the commissioner, but um, <laughs> we're, con- we're confident. Not, we're confident. You mean it's not official? You won't earn you an MLS official. Cup, but you earn, <laughs> earn yourself that. <laughs> Well, again, thanks, guys. Uh, I have fun with this, and and I I, I think it's uh, it's something that uh, puts a big smile on my face. So thank awesome. you. But but I, I want to win. Uh, I want to compete for an MLS Cup, and and I know our players do. And and hey, we've got four games to. And I know all the teams have four games to do it, and it's an exciting time. Um, and uh, hopefully, I can be the first in history to win the best dressed and 
and an MLS Cup. What wouldn't that be something, guys? Yes. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna work my best to to get that the done. Double. But thank, the double. Thank you, guys. Yes. <laughs> double <in 2020. laughs> Lucci, thank you. I can't so wear much. that jacket, by the way. It's it's orange. It's bright. <laughs> The fan base is going to have a big problem. Gee, with that. I got slim so you got to find a different color. My basement, okay, that's what we found. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll 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 improve it for for next year. I promise. Yeah. And we have our own little best eleven that would no doubt be coached and managed by Lucci Gonzalez. We'll get to that in a moment, folks. But it is the end of the season, and that means end of season awards voting for the Continental Awards begins today. You can check out extra time. Radio's Twitter for more information on that. They kind of hit on the people that don't always get the awards. We won't know this year's best 11 presented by Home Depot until November 18th next week. But we decided to reveal our best 11, Suze, with a (laughs) twist. And I'm sure everyone knows where this is going. (laughs) Our winner for this best 11 uh, and they're playing in a three-five-two. Yep, they sure are. So, so this is yeah. This obviously we are big, we're big we're big soccer hair people. We figured um, the best way to to sort of honor that was to get a little creative with our best eleven. Rather than the, go the traditional route, we're we're handing out the the, the, the hair awards. Lovers, Thank you very much. Food positivity y'all okay so we're gonna start with the the goalkeeper jill and uh we gave it to pedro galese from orlando city with the blonde curls love it he's been he's just been consistent you know with that look Mm -hmm. and uh it works works for me um we've got for on the defender side we've got breck who's just like an og right you never know exactly franco escobar with the long hair thank you this one and a headband. He's yes. been throwing a little headband in he there. He has, which I which I appreciate. Kendall Waston. Kendall Waston with the blue. Do we remember this? This was an unlikely one, and I very much um applaud blue it and appreciate it. Right very, very in. Okay, so in the midfield, then we've got Derek Jones, who also went blue. He had like it was more like the I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's information that would have I'm been helpful. Go Kendall, I just feel like he's a real trailblazer. Mm-hmm. Now, this one Alex Ring, who has had an outstanding season on the field. Yeah, yeah. But this one, this was uh right before the MLS's back tournament. All of a sudden he debuted this like sort of platinum silver hair and Alex Ring is a very uh understated kind of conservative guy. So this one threw me. I was like, "Dang." Quarantine, Susie. Quarantine. Just gotten out of quarantine. Exactly. Okay. So um, on, on the wing, on the left side, we've got um, Nani, which I'm sure everybody saw the purple braids that he recently debuted. Mm-hmm. It, it was wild. I, I, th- that was probably the most shocking for me because Nani didn't strike me as somebody who would um, dye his hair, but it was jarring. Here we are. It was 2020. 20. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a little partial to Atlanta United. I'm a Vikings fan for crying out loud. Right. And it just even for me may have been too much purple. But then again, he made our he made our best eleven. So he sure did. Okay. So center mid. Be. Center mid. I know you're gonna like this one because I feel like you told me you appreciated this. Rodolfo Pizarro from Miami with the pink streaks. You know, it was very reminiscent of a porcupine. And I would be afraid to go up against a porcupine. See? Tactics. Exactly. Ex- exactly. Okay. And then um, on the right side, we've got Kellen Rowe, who uh, went back to platinum. He, he He's kind of all over the place, um, at least in the past with his with his looks. Remember yeah. his quarantine look when he was just, he looked like Wolverine? And it right, was just like right, right. the long hair, the beard, and then he emerged and went back to, to platinum. So we put Kellen on this list as sort of, yeah, this is sort of a lifetime achievement thing. Oh, I like that. For him. Yeah? Okay. I love that. All right, so then um, up top, <laughs> Raul Rui Diaz, uh, who also went with the sort of silver platinum look. And I just feel like, you know, not only wow. does his hair look good, but- Very shiny um, attack. We, listen, exactly. We have yes. to we have to just celebrate it, I think, yes. especially yes. in 2020. Blind, when- you know, blind the defense. Exactly. That's what they're doing. And then the oh, okay, this is this is my all time, obviously. I, I know. Okay, so he was he was injured for most of the the season, but that doesn't yep. mean that his hair didn't look on point. Still and I am talking about Carlos Bella, who has the most beautiful head of hair I have ever seen. Long, short headband, whatever. Carlos Bella, I bow down. You're in our best eleven. You, Susanna Collins, are our call up. <laughs> MLS, maybe American soccer 
hair aficionado. I just try to keep up and uh, I usually go, what? And then you explain it to me and then I have thoughts, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> one person I have noticed and it's probably cause I've been up close and personal is Marcelino Moreno. Yes. For yes. 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 Not, he's a man of very few words. When yep. he was introduced to the media, they'd ask him a question and it was, I'm here to win. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm, Short I play for the team. And I mean that, I mean, he is tough as nails. And that is kind of his thing, and I love it. So I'm never going to ask him a hair question because I think he's the kind of guy maybe that would just stare you down. Yeah, like, I'm not answering that. But his hair, he could be in Orlando, mm-hmm. he could be in Connecticut, mm-hmm. and his hair has about I'd say ten <gasps> inches of height. Just it's just straight it's up incredible. I don't know how he it's keeps incredible. that volume. I don't either. But I, I want to know. Determined to find out. Yeah, Jill, can you make that a a mission? I'm of not yours? sure. He's not. He's not in the eleven. I wouldn't want to say he's on the bench. I'd say he's. Mm, Did he make the eighteen? Did he make the eighteen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We're waiting to kind of figure out. Okay. Uh, he's waiting on his papers. Okay. Listen. He's waiting on his papers. There's room. There's room. I and also, you Pending know, we can be we can be influenced. You know what the funniest thing about today is though, Jill? What? Like we have literally dubbed ourselves the fashion police and like the hair gurus of MLS. Like nobody has else has has given us this honor. We just have been like, no, it's us. We do they like, need do, do they need to give no. it to us for us to be it? No. Nah. I mean, nah. Let's be real. Nah. 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 Um, but one thing I would just like to end the show with is we will get a better best dressed coach award in the budget. Yes, Lucci. I promise you. No more bootlegs. We will get like a nice kind of golden <laughs> hanger, golden blazer. Um, and really little, I think, so it can fit in a trophy cabinet. This can't be bigger than MLS Cup. No one's gonna put it in their trophy cabinet. Exactly. No, we'll make it we'll make it a, a very reasonable size and it will be shiny and, and pretty, and people are going to want to win this award, Jill. So whether Lucci likes it or not. Exactly. Uh, guys, what an episode. Thank you so much for for listening, for tuning in. Enjoy the uh the international break, y'all. But we will see you in the postseason. Yeah, we Woo! will. 